Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Rugby Reclined, a very special episode. We've teamed up with Restart Rugby this week and they have very kindly provided me with one of their ambassadors, the man, the myth, the legend, Alfie Barbary. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Thank you. How are you? Good. Are you, where are you at the moment? At home? Uh, yeah, I'm just at my home. Uh, sort of moved in a few be- weeks back with a mate from school, so... Nice little setup, ready. So for you're living the full student sort of setup with a mate, are you? Yeah, with my mate from home. So he's uh, got he's uh, working in Birmingham. So um, sort of we thought may as well just move in together. Boarding nice. house lived opposite each other. Sort of worked. Who's who's the cook? Who's the uh, who's the sort of head of the house? Are you tidy? I, I thought so. He's just dropped out of uni, so I thought um, you made change. He did a lot of cooking at uni. Um, he's still living like a student. Delivery bags everywhere. Um, I have to sort of learn learn to uh, become a bit of the mum of the house. Really? Are you naturally quite organised or are you a bit of a no. um, So I was in the Acad house just before that. And I tell you what, I'm probably the messiest in there. So um, I've had to change my ways quite a lot. Because, you know, I, I never, I mean, this might surprise you, but I have never, ever done the whole Academy House thing. Like I once went round to the lads academy house and it was like it was like a third world sort of place that had gone in with a war there was like stuff everywhere like laundry was like crawling out the house the yeah. fridge was a death trap i mean you telling me that's where you've come from and you were the worst person in there uh, yeah i'd say i was um i'd be the person who just uh, leave the dishes in the sink to soak <laughs> to <laughs> so soak think, what for five days yeah five days that's that does the job I tell you what, though, I've got an amazing uh, sink in my house where basically um, I leave stuff on the side, right? I don't know if a, few, a lot of men have got it, but I leave stuff on the side and then I come back a day later and it's all gone. It's like it's all washed and it, it all ends back up in the cupboard. I've talked to Chloe about it. I've asked her about it and she always gets upset because it doesn't. I don't think it works for her. But every time I leave, mate, I have you got something similar in this house? Yeah, I thought, I thought that's what happened. You just left them at the side and they started to rack up and I thought, the old dish fairy had gone, uh, had a bit of a leave, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, talk to me about your, um, your sort of injury at the moment, because you've kind of started with a bang um, this this season. Obviously, I, I saw you scoring tries for fun, playing a multitude of of kind of positions, but you've had a bit of an, uh, uh, sort of a, uh, an issue with an injury at the moment. Yeah. Um, so just before the Exeter game, uh, sort of just warming up, and um, I just felt a little tweak in my... Um, hamstring I was like oh didn't really think anything of it just a little there's something so I carried on sort of warm up started to go and um Thomas Young actually noticed it and was like you're right I was like yeah I'm fine just sort of gritting my teeth doing like little simple passes so he's trying just go go get it looked at I was like, I'm fine honestly and it wasn't until he sort of said Look, you're not coming on first five minutes, so you've got um you've got an hour before you have to sort of do anything. Just get some soft tissue, you'll be fine. Little I know, went to um Ali James, our physio, and sort of he assessed it and went, Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna pull you to be the safe option. And then no one thought it'd be anything, it was more of a precaution. And then uh, got a scan the day after, and it was sort of like a grade two hamstring tear, which was just gutting. So How's um how's injured life been? Stressful? Are you good injured or are you a bit like a caged animal? Um, yeah, I think uh, sort of this one I've had to keep my sort of head a little bit more as much as I've been sort of annoying the physios as much as possible. Um, I've sort of wanted, I just want to get back playing rugby. Obviously, I haven't played played that much. Um, I've only what, played eight games this season. So I'm sort of just trying to get back out there. And I think with my ankle, the first, when I did my ankle against Sale, I was sort of always rushing, rushing to get back and sort of um, sort of get back out there. And I think just with that, that's when I sort of tore my calf. I think I went, was a bit too eager, got back too quick. And um, yeah, and it just had a knock on effect. So I'm trying to have a bit of maturity now and sort of try to get through it in one piece, really. Well, listen, every day is a school day. And as long as you're learning now, there are some senior professionals playing in the Premiership who haven't learned that. Your body will, is, 
healed when it's healed and it doesn't matter when a, if a surgeon or, or a coach says listen you know you'll be back in two months if it takes three months it's going to take three months it doesn't matter how much you uh, you you push it we've actually met a couple of times when i was uh, in my sort of dying days at, at was i remember this kind of quite kind of uh i was gonna say chunky but quite sort of built <laughs> kid with a, a ridiculous ridiculous bird's nest afro kind of ridiculous hair and obviously i'd heard all about um what a good player you are. You you were picked up quite early on from Wasp, weren't you? Yeah, so I think the first time I sort of got asked to train up, I think I was 16. Um, and sort of that was like, I remember I was a TR for an Anglo, Anglo Welsh Cup, I think it was back then. And uh, I, went, I went there and that was sort of my first week training. And I think that was the first time we sort of met. And, did, did we, didn't I play, did I play in the Anglo Welsh game as well? Yeah, you played in it, yeah. That was a shock to the system. I didn't even know those games existed. That's how badly my career was going at that point that I had to play. I thought, I thought when we were off playing for England that you all went on holiday, and then I was most shocked to find that there was this like Anglo Welsh. It used to be called the LV. I thought it was like everyone got Louis Vuitton stuff for that week. I, I didn't, I didn't know. But how was, how has your experience at Was been? Was it the only club you were ever going to be part of? Um, yeah, uh, to be fair, I love it. I remember it. It says ever so been up there since sixteen, sort of. Um, know know everyone just sort of it's nice to finally sort of progress a little out of the academy and sort of try and my stripes a little I think uh, a lot I'm still sort of the young kid so just trying to trying to get that past that really what happened with the hair I thought that could have was oh. a potential trademark but I, I I have to say I mean I'm not one to talk about hair as I haven't got much but I much prefer your hair now than that ridiculous fro yeah. um uh, so the hair sort of, I remember first pre-season, like, I mean, 17, I trained up senior academy and I had my pre-season and I sort of uh, said a three Gs that um, England were going to win the World Cup. So, Do you want to explain to people what three Gs is? Because a lot of fans, I obviously know what that is yeah. in terms of three genuines, but explain to people why that was not a good thing to do, especially <laughs> as England didn't win it. Yeah, so if you, it's basically when, if you say three Gs, it's basically you are guaranteeing like something's true or something's happened or going to happen. And if it's wrong, you have to shave, shave your head. So, um, yeah, I remember, remember that sort of watching the semi-final in the Aiken house, sort of the free kick from Trippier going in. I was like, we're doing this, oh, full on football fever. Next minute I know we're in the garden about eight, for eight lads a bit like hazing sort of just with these clippers I'm like oh please no um, well I, I, I had a similar sort of setup with um with a guy called Phil Swainston at uh, it's actually I talk about it in my book the what flanker where someone did a three G's and they didn't do it and obviously you I imagine being quite a good sport with the academy even though it was hazing I'm you know you probably did you did you try and fight your way out of it or were you um, quite good so I just said I had to do it I thought it was something new and then I sort of said we'll just do a three or four all over and then as that as that progressed they're like yeah we're just blending the sides with a zero and it just came up to here just saying yeah we'll blend it in and it was yeah it just eventually I was full on skinhead I FaceTime my mum I just remember scre her screaming and uh yeah my dad said I looked like a Russian for for weeks and uh it doesn't yeah. matter how how old you get or whether you play amazing for uh for the club which you obviously have done this season your mum will never forgive that. She'll never forgive you. Like my mum now still says to me, the reason that I didn't get picked more for England was that when I grew my beard, I, it made me look up too old. And that when I've got when I got trim, I looked a bit younger. And she said that tattoos, that that is no good. My mum cried when she, when she when she saw me. They, they never change. And, and even it doesn't matter how old you get and how big and ugly you get, she'll always be devoted if you do something wrong like that. Yeah, I I think my mum would would enough forgive me if I got tattoos. Would she not? Yeah, uh, especially as I still sometimes use her for the washing. I, sometimes <laughs> I love that. So listen, you can't cook, you can't clean, and your mum's still doing your washing. Sometimes, sometimes. We did. We had a broken washing machine for a bit, so I was, yeah, it has arrived now. But <laughs> I had a broke, I had a broken washing machine too. But Chloe, because she healed up quite quickly, and now it's all, it's all so I could get in so much trouble for this. Um, okay, so just talk to me a bit about you know what was it like to actually get out on the field and and perform, you know, and to you know, to, to have the kind of um, magic moments you've had because I'm uh, you know to, to actually be part of the club's one thing, but to come on and do as well as you've done must have been amazing. 
Yeah, it's pretty surreal to be fair. I remember um, the Leicester Leicester Tigers game. So that's one that stands out. So sort of. I couldn't couldn't really believe it. I came off the pitch like, what what has just happened? Like, sort of pinched myself. It was, it was unreal. And then sort of from there, I just tried to uh, keep momentum and going into next season and just sort of with the uh, sort of with the sort of momentum I had, I just wanted to sort of carry it on. And luckily I sort of got some starts with some injuries and that and started to play quite well. And unfortunately it all came to sort of a halt after the sale game. But um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I, I just sort of want to get back out there. It was incredible. It was. If I told you at the beginning of the season that you would have been talked about as a potential England player, that there was England calls up, you would have believed me? Uh, not really, no. Um, it was, yeah, that was a bit, that was a, that was a bit, that was a bit strange. How sort of they were that sort of rumored and stuff, and getting called up for the Autumn Nation Cup. That was uh, that was very cool. I, I couldn't believe that. I remember I was just uh, in my bed at home, and um, Richard Hill calls me. He's like, "You're coming into camp tomorrow." I was like, "Am I?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "You, <laughs> you sure?" And uh, yeah, it sort of went from there, and I had a great, great couple of days there. Hard work, but yeah, surreal. It's intense, isn't it? It's a massive step up from club training. Yeah, it's so different. I remember they have this thing called like bacon and eggs. And I went down, it's like six, six o'clock in the morning. I went down, I was like, what is this? I no idea. Why are we going to the market? Bacon and eggs. I thought it was just like a breakfast thing. So I went down to the market, sort of thinking it was just a breakfast thing. Just have some breakfast, like sort of positional meetings of that. Go down, I'm bloody skipping, skipping nonstop boxing, sweating at... It's awful. It's awful because when they first brought that in, Eddie called us in and was like, mate, we're going to do something called bacon and eggs in the morning. I was like, brilliant. I, I love bacon and eggs. So I was like, Eddie, that's genius. And I got the shock of my life. I was wrestling Dylan Hartley at six in the morning and you haven't even got out of bed. Um, but, you know, that's potentially why. Well, I was about to say, they were the second best team in the, in the world. But after the Six Nations, maybe they should give match or bacon and eggs. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think the question on everybody's lips is at the moment, and I, I, you know, it, it followed me uh, through my career only in in three positions. Unfortunately, I was never talented enough to have potentially played anywhere. Where, where do you where do you want to play? Where do where do the club want you to play? Do you know where Eddie wants you to play? Um, yeah, I've sort of I've sort of got um, mixed opinions really where everyone sees me sort of playing. So it's more just getting the best of both worlds. Trying to practicing me hooking isn't going to make me a worse flanker and playing number eight's not going to make me a, a worse date or whatever. So it's just sort of balancing the both and hopefully get the opportunities when it arises, really. But so I've spoke to a few people, I said, no rush, I'm still sort of only 20 and it's only going to better my skill set, really. But if I, if I had to put a gun to your head and say, listen, your mum's never going to do your laundry again, <laughs> right? And you and the, the, the dishwasher fairy or dish fairy is disappearing. Where are you going to play? Oh, I'd where would you tell me? I'd say centre. Centre. That's what I mean. The thing, is, you, the thing is, of all the people I know, you could actually do that. That's when I, I, I genuinely, you know, there's a massive hype about you, obviously, when, when you were younger. And then for me to see, I, you, you know, you came into the club and then for me to turn on you scoring tries for fun, sidestepping, doing... Did you even kick, did you get away kicking the ball in a couple I, of games or something? I do yeah. Mate, I, I, I had one kick, one, one chip and chase, one try my entire career, and that was pure luck. So you're getting to do all of that and, and there's a potential you could play your centre. So 13, 12 or 13 would be the dream. Yeah, that would be the dream, a very unlikely dream. But Have you spoken to Lee? Have you told Lee Blackett for, that yeah, that's what you want to do? Yeah, uh, it's sort of a very one-worded... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right, Lee, mate, my favourite thing is, Lee, what a lovely guy, right, Lee, right, Alfie, no, you're not going to do that. Um, Obviously, Eddie Jones, I mean, again, just going back to England stuff, and I know you you probably want to get back, um, you know, fit as quickly as possible, but Eddie Jones is quoted as saying, this summer series will give us a chance to look at a lot of players and see how they step up. And it's an important uh, part of our World Cup preparation. He said, for younger players, it's a chance to show what they can do at international level and how they are in a team environment. There aren't too many opportunities to lead at international level. So for the more experienced players, it's a chance to take further leadership roles and grow their game in that area. Have you got hopes for that? Are you got fingers crossed? Or are you not thinking about it? Um, I think there's hopes for it. There's always sort of you set goals at um, start of the season and stuff. That's sort of um, one of them for me. But obviously, 
unfortunate things like injury that you can't foresee sort of happen. So I can only just stay hopeful, try try get a few games before the end of the season and go from there and just keep working hard. I was going to ask you um, about kind of the restart stuff, um, because obviously that's why we kind of got you on the call, obviously, because, you know, I think it's fascinating. A lot of people wanted to... to to see what you're actually like, because um, they've obviously only get the experience kind of on the field. And you're, I, I follow you on social media. A lot of photos are sort of polar necks done up and just looking slightly moody in bars. So I don't know whether people get in the full the full um, image. Are you a big social media man? Um, I'm not too big. No, I, I try, but um, I don't have the face for the camera. You see, um, <laughs> well, I, I haven't either. But if you talk enough crap, it will. You know, you will, you will get on. I mean, do you do you? Um, just, I mean, we talked about the stuff off the field. You said you're into the sports stuff, but do you want, is the stuff you do, are you doing any courses? Do you know what you want to do when you, I know you're only 20, but I think part of the, the, the reason, you know, the stuff that Restart do is to help guys, you know, think on what they want to do when they finish playing. You got any ideas on that? Yeah, so that's uh, one of the um, big things, sort of, I say I'll kick on to next season. It's sort of this, I really want to focus on rugby this season and the season before sort of, was out all year with uh, injury, so I sort of said this and just get focused, put everything into my all, and sort of next season hit the ground running with sort of the off field, off field stuff, and try, try sort of get an appropriate sort of thing around my rugby with that. So unfortunately, I'm still still sort of looking. If you know anyone. <laughs> Well, it depends what your passions are. I mean, I, I basically have just gone for the approach to try everything, which um, doesn't always work. They say you know, there's no point being a jack of all trades and master of, of none. I mean, you know, well, I see you, some of the, your teammates, you know, Jack Willis is into property development. You know, do you want to be a film star? Like what, you know, a carpenter? What's your, you know? I, don't, I haven't really put much thought into it. I thought... Um... Uh, barber would be quite a cool one. A barber, all right. Yeah, all right. I've, Listen, I've, you I've, have, I've got a receding hairline. You have a proceeding hairline. It looks like it's going to be growing down to your eyes by the time you finish, which is a great, which is a great, a great place to be. Um, why Barbary? I mean, uh, apart from your name, why Barbering even? Um, well, I've sort of, I don't think it's going to happen, to be honest. I sort of tried it a few times. My mum's a, my mum's a hairdresser, so she has a few, few, few clippers and stuff and, uh, I used to, uh, well, this only happened once and never again, really. I had, um, it was our, our house photo day at school. And um, obviously I'd be like, yeah, my mum's a hairdresser. I know a bit around, no bit, no bit. So uh, we had our, we had our sort of um, house photo. We're going there and everyone wanted to trim. I'll go, I'll do it. Oh my God, it was, it was awful. It's harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, it's so hard. I literally, yeah. I remember me and my mate got sent home, like, you've got to sort it out. I, had to, I guess like, mum was on a Friday night, meant to be at the pub. I'm like, mum, me, uh, me and Henry have been sent home from school, you've got to give him a hair, sort his hair out. Was, Why, because you, had you done that old, like, you know, gone yeah. too high, used the, the clippers no, have fallen off? Clippers, but then I sort of, I'd missed some, and I'd already put the clippers away, and I spotted, I was like, I'll just get them with the scissors. But obviously, they're different legs, so he had, like, racing stripes <laughs> all around his head. Well, I, I had that, uh, I had something similar at school. I, again, I lost a bet uh, for something and I thought that would shave my head. But what they did is I, I went to shave my friend's head. And as I went to do it, I did it too aggressively. The clipper popped off and I shaved it. And I said, listen, you know, trying to be a good team man. I said, look, I'll let you cut my hair. And they just, they cut my sideburns off here, right? So by the end of it, I went and played in like a Daily Mail Cup game with basically a four with like a crash helmet on. And people look at me, but now... Will Stewart and the rest of the people and the guy, that's the fashion. Tom Dunn, yeah. Ellis Genge. That, that I would have been on trend, but I was unfortunately 15 years yeah, too early for it. Yeah. Have you, have you, have you not thought about it? Have, have you tried to keep it simple? You haven't thought about getting the old front row thing like the rest of these lads? I, I tried it a bit, but my hair's like very pubic, so it just, it just looks, <laughs> looks and feels horrible. Fine, good confession. Well, look, I, I, you know, it's been great to hear about your, your story and I'm very excited to see you play and, you know, fingers crossed for, for the England stuff. But one of the key things I said was, was talking to you about Restart. Why did you choose to be um, an ambassador? Um, so I sort of got asked and with obviously my injury background this season, it's been, I've been in a dark place sometimes. I just thought it was something I sort of was passionate about. It's like, yeah, 100%. It's, I've never really, really, I think... Uh, suffer mental health that much in terms of up to now sort of I was in dark place sometimes my rehab and that and sort of I couldn't I couldn't be uh, more honoured to really get on board 
And from that, I just thought I'll give it on while I'll, I'll happily, happily, it was a massive honour to sort of do it and really raise awareness for it because it is a massive sort of massive thing in rugby and I don't think people understand how big it is due to that, the pressures of the game. What, what do you mean a dark what do you mean a dark place around the injury? What just feeling a bit sorry for yourself or sad or what worse than that? It's just more the fact I with injuries sort of, you know, like sort of rehabbing you it feels especially the first early stages, it feels like every day's the same and you're not really not really getting anywhere and sort of the club we weren't we weren't doing very well at the time. So it wasn't really a great environment to sort of be in and then I was probably sapping a bit myself. So um, it was just really how to sort of turn, turn that around, really, and sort of get back into that. How did, you turn, how did you turn it around? Did you reach out to someone or someone step in and say, listen, you're sapping the life out of everyone. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, people just have a piss off. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I sort, of, I sort of just spent a lot of time. Mum, mum and dad sort of uh, helped me out a bit. It was just the more when you weren't doing things, like if you're just sitting in the boot and you're like, oh, that this is just awful like what what can I do it's more that sort of time so it's definitely helped with um parents who just who know who just know what I'm like and sort of very active want to be doing stuff and so they yeah they were probably the sort of people who put me on the straight and narrow do you, do you see other teammates go, going through similar stuff because you know, I, I've looked at that through my career. I've had people who've been sort of un, having serious issues around their kind of mental health. And I didn't realise. I've always been very vocal, vocal about speak um, using a sports psychologist. I started when I was seventeen when I when I joined Wasps to help me. You know, when through injury, through other things. Do, do you see that a lot with your teammates and stuff? Uh, I think yeah, we've uh, just got a new sports site last few months, and he he's been really good. So you definitely see boys sort of talk to him a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things you don't really know what uh, one of the boys are going through unless unless you are. So it's one of those things that like you don't want to suffer in silence. But yes, yeah, it's, it's just one of those uh, awkward things I think around around mental health, going around asking asking sort of the boys whether they're right or not, and especially with the season how it's going, it's just it's we've just got to sort of do it more. And this weekend, last weekend, and the restart rounds are great for it. Do you think, um, from a personal point of view, obviously, you know, having amazing supportive parents is 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 great for getting you through, but sometimes having an objective thing, would you now go ahead using a sports psychologist more? Um, yeah, I think the first time sort of uh, sports side came in, I didn't really didn't really know him. And it was, uh, it, for me personally, it was a bit too personal speaking about that sort of stuff with him. So, um, but now we sort of, I built a relationship with him and sort of, it's, it definitely flows a lot easier than sort of, it feels more of a conversation than sort of going, talking about your pro- problems, sapping for a bit and like moving on. It's, uh, it feels more of a friendship. You sort of, now I've got to know him. He's, he, he's good. Yeah. I definitely yeah. use him. Then. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, look, I think it's fantastic. You guys have, have got that because obviously restart, Part of the reason we're, we're, we're trying to raise money, and actually anyone who's, who's listening to this who wants to help um, support restarts with their, their mental health side, because, you know, 50 to 60 players per season are using the kind of anonymous um, helpline and using the kind of uh, the therapy service. I mean, is that, does that shock you? you know, because when, obviously since you've got involved in restart, have you, uh, is that kind of blown away by the amount of work they are doing to help players? Yeah, it's, um, it's, I didn't really realise how much they really do and sort of until you hear about it and especially the figures about 56 people use the actual uh, confidential counseling service it's, it's ridiculous and the sort of i think we've got to make that people more aware of that because i had i had no idea about it sort of um up to recently so it is incredible how how much they do and is it can only get better really do you find the guys um, within the team are quite receptive to, to restart? Because one of the things I, I found when I was playing was that everyone wants to support it because rugby players are good people, but they don't always appreciate it until they actually need it. Do you find as kind of people are receptive to what you're saying or is it can be a bit of an uphill climb sometimes? No, I 100%. I don't know what it's like for you, but I feel like people are definitely receptive and believe in it. I think with everything's going on in the world and mental health coming bigger problem than ever they're sort of everyone sort of is buying in it's more of a buying across the ball than just sort of the ambassadors and uh it's it's only going to build awareness sort of so yeah 
So, I mean, so what's next for you? You know, obviously more more rehab um, time off. Like what what's happening? Yeah, so hopefully get some rehab, some more rehab done in the couple last next couple of weeks. Sort of hopefully, hopefully go on from there. Try try get back in the team really. Well, listen, Alfie, thank you so much for, for everything you've said. If people want to follow you on social media, where can they, they find you? Even though you, you said you haven't got the face for it, I don't believe that. You're dashingly handsome. Um, Alfie.Barbary on Instagram. Okay, well, listen, well, good luck with the injury um, and rehab. I hope you get an opportunity before the end of the season and enjoy playing multiple positions. Don't settle down too too much. But if uh, trust me, if Eddie asks you to do something, just just do that one. Don't yeah. uh, don't get too creative or argue with you. I mean, I actually forgot to ask you, what was he like with you in camp? Because sometimes he can latch on to people. Did he speak to you or did he? Yeah, yeah, he spoke to me. Uh, he sort of gave me gave me some work ons as. Uh, yeah. Which were? Can you can you say or not? Yeah, just just by throwing and a bit around my uh, body weight. So sort of take from that what you will. <laughs> well, so yeah, but the thing is, is that with that in mind, you've now moved in with a guy who can't cook. Who eats the liver roux? What What are you doing about that? You, you... Now I've got this right here. This is this is what I'm doing, Jamie. Oh, well, actually, funny you should say, Jamie, because this, I, I, I've got a book called Cooking for Fitness that I could probably send you, which has got <laughs> equally better recipes, which works with my fitness pal. If you want that, because Jamie's good, but yeah, I'll, offline I'll send you that if you like a copy. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I was about to say because otherwise it would be like the old academy days if you didn't yeah. if you didn't if you didn't take it. But listen, if, if thank you, Alfred, I wish you the best of luck. And for anybody, I, I should have said this earlier, who wants to donate, please text uh, rugby to seven o five. Sorry, seven o five six o. Each uh, text costs five pounds plus one standard rate message that is again i'll say that again if you're listening to this um only as a as a podcast or through audio uh, you text the word rugby to 70560 and each text costs five pounds plus one standard uh, message rate and that will go straight into um the funds to help uh, support players mental health and as from what alfie said we all have dark days we all have issues and there's obviously people out there in in, in lots uh lot worse position if we can support that's brilliant Alfie good luck good luck with the cooking um and uh I will catch you very soon thanks so much for coming on Rugby Recruit thank you very much